G'day guys, welcome to Scotch Down Under. I'm Ken. I'm the Gear All. And I'm Scott. And today we're going to one of the islands. We're going to the Isle of Skye. Isle of Skye for Talisker 10. So the Isle of Skye is way up the northwest of Scotland, and this is about the only distillery that's on there, I think. Is there, there is one other. Tonnebeek or something like that? Is it an active distillery? Yes! You sure? Because that toaster right there only... Torrebeg! A Torrebeg distillery was only founded a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. oh so it's not an so, active... So uh, Talisca had to change their name from the oldest distillery on the Isle of Skye well, oh, hang on, it used to be the only distillery yeah, yeah, yeah. on the guy, and now it's the oldest. Only, yeah. Okay. Uh, oldest, yeah. <laughs> so this expression is, what we can tell, chill filtered and coloured, which is a bit of a shame. But it is 45.8% ABV. Standard. Standard for a 10 year old, which is, and this is their standard release. They've got a couple of NISs around this and a bunch of other stuff. Mm. Um, there's a couple behind me there. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's got some good points and some bad points. These guys have been around since 1830. Jesus, that's a long time. Yeah. And it's kind of had it, as well as pretty much any other distillery known to man, it's had a pretty checkered past. Even a guy got to prison because he sold whiskey they didn't have. <laughs> 1892, uh, one of the owners, Roderick Kemp, sold his share and bought Macallan instead. <laughs> Damn. That would be perceived um, as a wise move. <laughs> and up, well, up until up until profitable. 1928, yeah. they actually triple distilled. Yeah. Ah. So in 1928, they abandoned triple distillery. 1960, it substantially damaged by fire. Um, and yeah, then it just goes in and talk about all yeah, the different so releases and stuff. So looking in the book, so if you guys want a really good whiskey book, this comes out every year. This is an absolute gem for information with whiskey and distilleries. And most of the distilleries have a single page. talisker has got a double page spread. <laughs> so they've got some pretty impressive history. There's, there's a lot of history there because yeah. most of the text on that is just the, the notations as to what year and, and what happened and when things, stuff which happened. is pretty awesome. Yeah. And Diageo. Well, they ended up in Giorgio's hands. Diageo yes. went, yeah, we'll have as, this. As a lot of distilleries do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and before Diageo, these guys, like most distilleries, again, they didn't have their own expression. So back in, was it 88? 1988? I think it yeah. was. Yeah. So they bought out the Master of Malts collection and they bought out the Talisker. So that's when they started producing their own stuff after that. They're a, a fairly decent sized distillery, 3.3 million litres a year. That's not too bad. Yeah. And it's very well known. Um, it's very characteristic being, you know, well, it was the only distillery on Sky, and they're very proud of that fact. I love the labelling for Telescope. Oh, they nail it. Oh, they nail it's it. got the Isle of Sky there. You've got the, the windswept seascape, the explosion yeah, of the, the waves around. on the rocks. Yep. And the best thing about it is they give credit to the photographer. Oh, really? Yep, so if you open up the lid. Oh, that's awesome. So you've got the credit to the, the How photographer cool that took the image. Is which is that? a massive thing for me and Ken being photographers. Yeah, <laughs> that, is, that is neat. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and that's the first thing I noticed. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. I never actually noticed that myself. That is mm. awesome. Yeah, that's mm. thumbs up for me. Yeah, but that's, that's I mean, yeah. All the all the tell tell <laughs> all the Telecas, all the Telecas releases, <laughs> all of the Telecas stuff, all of the Telesca releases that I've seen. The the, the packaging is great. I yeah. mean, yeah, you know, the boxes they they look the biz. They stand out. Um, there's lots of little quirky things on there. You know, you've got the aisle itself on the side. You've got the yeah, cool looking line. I guess we'll call it we'll call it a, a mermaid lion, a mer lion, a mer lion. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's probably got some cool Gaelic tradition behind it, but yeah, very cool packaging. As you said, you've got they've got the map there. Yeah, very very neat. It's right there. As yeah, well. and, and bottle, it all carries it's through it's onto the bottle, bottle as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very so nice. Yes, very cool. Very stylish. 
It has a, I mean, the, the colour is fantastic, but it's unfortunately... Yeah, coloured. I mean, DRJ colours everything under the sun, so... They, pretty much! Yeah. 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 I do like the, the labelling they've got on, on the bowl itself. That font that they're using, it's very old school it's script. It's very stylish. Characteristic. Very yeah. classy. Yeah. That, that hint of gold with the aged ten years. And the... The lion mermaidy thingy is embossed onto there. <laughs> we should do some research and find out what the hell that is. Yeah. Made by the sea. Yep. Yeah. Very awesome. Alright, stop flapping your gums. I want to smell this. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> it's like salty and briny and sea and, and smoky. fish and merm lion thingies. <laughs> that is still peated and unpeated. Yeah. Um, yep. But I think it's 75% peated at. Between 22, 25 ppm. Okay. Yeah, Between that sounds about 20 right. and 25 ppm. Yep, yep. Um, so it's a it's a decent amount of peat. You don't really pick up the peat as a characteristic of peat. It kind of bleeds into the, the salty and minerally kind of... Yeah. Just to be like an earthy kind of... like. It, it's more earthy than mm. smoky. Yeah. But it is a beautiful, beautiful nose. Very vibrant, crisp. There's not much ABV on it, even though it is 45. Essentially, no, 45. no, no, no. no. The, it's yeah. not a high ABV nose, but there's that that mm. sort of charred element to it. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like charred fish. Charred fish, like fish cooked on char grills. Well, I was going to say there's a little bit of like lemony zest in there as well. Mm. So yeah. yeah, it is charred yeah. fish with some lemon zest on it. Mm. That is like a fish wrapped in alfoil with some citrus in it, just cooked on coals. Yep. That's delicious mm. on the nose. Yeah. yeah. Cheers. Mmm. Mm. First sip, straight up, there's that sort of briny element to it. Yeah. Not a super strong Laphroaig style, but it is there. Mm. There is that kind of iodine minerally kind of that it has as well. I like the end of the palate. It's, it's quite smooth and sweet and caramely, buttery almost. After you get that brine and that decent punch. But not a strong, you know. See, for me, it's the other way around. I'm getting that 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 caramel and sort of florally sweetness on the front and the the peat and the earthiness is coming through on the back of the palate and it's lingering it's beautiful mm, uh, yeah i'm with you uh, after you swallow so it, yeah, the, yeah it's the, definitely the, it's the, the honey the is here and the and the, the yep, peat yep, and, the, and yep. that little bit of smoke and saltiness sort of comes across yep. the roof of the mouth and then i agree with that drops in well, I better add some water before I drink it all because I'm really quite enjoying this. Mm. Straight up, it softens that, that little bit of water, softens the ethanol off on the nose. Mm. Um, not that it was that punchy to start with. Yeah. It just kind of opens it up. Sweeter and rounded on the palate, and it's taken away that brine. Mm. That char and that smoke has, has softened. It's, it's become subtle, so yeah. much more earthy mm. and so much softer. This takes Fantastic. water really well. A bit more of the oak. Mm. Yeah, a bit more of the oak, and I'm getting a bit more of the citrus. Mmm. Mm. I almost like it. Yeah, it's a lot more. Almost peppery there as well. Mmm. Yeah, I was, was going to so say the, like so the oak. Some, yeah. So there's some some peppercorns in the elf oil with the with the fish yeah. and the lemon. Oh, oh, no other way to do it. Now I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and just pour some of this over it. <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah. Really hot skillet, bit of butter. Sear the fish after it's been baked in the foil. Pour some of this over it. That'd be absolute oh, magic. Oh, that sounds delicious. I'm hungry. Mm, it'd be hard to sear a fish. Welcome to episode two of Whiskey <laughs> Chef. <laughs> How much is the bottle of this? I think about 90 bucks. Solid, solid dram for the price. Oh, yeah. Yep. What are you going to rate it? I've got to give it a solid nine. I'm, yeah, I'm going to give it a 9 as well, because it, it does everything that it, could, it put out to do, and it's pretty much one of the, the like essential whiskies that everyone should have in their collection. It's always going to be on my shelf. Yeah, same. So I'm going to give it a bit higher, I'm going to give it a 9.4. Hmm. 
I'll have to knock it back because it's coloured and yeah. chill filtered. But other than that, it is over 40% ABV and it is yeah. almost 46. It's that close, you might as well call it 46. Yeah. Um, and an all round great dram. Yeah, it's it's a solid, easy drinking peated whiskey. Which isn't from Isla. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> So, so, variety. Variety. So get yourself down to the bottle shop and grab yourself a bottle of Talisco from the Isle of Skye. Until next time, have, have a, a good, good one. one. Hello. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> no. Anyway. Smells like whiskey, tastes like whiskey, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I've never actually owned a bottle of Telescope. I have. Really? I have. Get out. Yeah. No, no.